of Master Shrin. Let's begin. Uh, today our Dharma request is... Today the Dharma request is going to be by Zhang Jinbo. So I'm going to ring the bell three times and then invite him to request Dharma. So if you'd like to join me, please put your hand palms together and we can Qing Fa and we'll do Xian San Wen Xin Li. Raho Mundo Qing Zhang Qin Bo Qing Fa. Okay, here we go. Yi Wan Xin Ar Wan Xin Sam Wan Xin Nirugo 教导我们如何了神托斯离苦得了素真无神 Will the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and earn birth and death and quickly realize numbers. Namu Tasa Magawato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Namu Tasa Bagawato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Namo Saranto Suchedo Ye Olahari Sammeo Samputo Shi Namo Saranto Suchedo Ye Olahari Sammeo Samputo Shi Wu Shang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa by Chen Wan Shi Nan Sao Yu Wu Jin Jen Wan to Shou Chi Yen Shi Ru Lai Chen Shi Yi Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of yons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. All right, uh, appreciate that. Zhang Qinbo, Amitofo, Dharma request. Welcome everybody again. We're here, it is hot here, it's uh, 30 degrees. And if it gets really sweaty, we can turn that back on once we're underway, if people are suffering and bathing in sweat. So you have to decide. But I think once we're, once we're going, there's enough ambient sound that we can turn that back on. All righty, uh, that the Dharma request today came from Shanxi province, uh, which is quite wonderful for us. So let's see here. We respectfully acknowledge the Kumbhumiri people of the Uganda language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where the monastery is located. We pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Woman 
Okay, uh, let's see here. We've got one more item. We've got our bell song, and let's do that today. I've got my bell. And the bell song helps get us, help, helps our minds settle into the stories that we're about to share today. So here we go. Bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. Chung Shang Chuan San Chien Jie Nei Po Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xun Qi Fa Jie He Ping Li Yi Bao Tan Luo Hou De. Okay, here we go. All right. So, my goodness, as I mentioned, uh, our Dharma requester is out in far distant Shanxi province. That's not too far from Wutai Shan. Um, we are here in the Gold Coast of Queensland, southeastern Queensland. And our translator is also here in, here in the, our monastery. But our Sizop, the person who's putting this... Uh, lecture out into the world is in Northern California. So we make the most of our uh, electronic communications and we're very grateful for everybody's hard work uh, to make this lecture succeed. And today we have friends here from Sydney, from Cascade, Colorado, from Hong Kong, from Santa Clara, California, from Saratoga, California, we know who that is, from Montreal, Quebec, from New York City, from Round Rock, Texas, yep, from Dublin, Ohio, uh, where else? Alameda, California, from Kunming in Sichuan province, from, uh, let's see here, Alameda, again, from Jakarta, Indonesia, from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, oh, amazing, we truly span the globe. Uh, let's see here, where else? San Rafael, from San Jose, from Mesa, Arizona, Calgary, Alberta, from Santa Clara, Elk Grove. Let's see here. Susan is in Hercules. Uh, Sylvia is in Seattle. Where else? Ukiah, Virginia, Vancouver, British Columbia. From Beijing, from Baotou, Nei Mongu, Harbin, Jishu, Nega, Dongbei, Nali, Hayo, Hangzhou. Sanwei, Fengjia, Hanzhou, Laida. Uh, Dalian, uh, Chaoyang, those are Dongbei Ren. Huh? Nama Shandong, uh, Hayo, uh, Jinan, Shandong, uh, Hayo, uh, Heilongjiang, uh, Doida, uh, Chenzhou, Najoshi, Fujian, Chongo, the Nanbu, Jilin, Chongo, the Beibu, uh, Shandong, uh, Yo, Ohio, oh. okay, from Tangshan, Hubei, Zhejiang, Ningbo, Shanghai. Okay, go away, Huan Yin Niemann. Welcome everybody, glad you're here. Now, let's see here. You're looking, if you can see my screen, what are you looking at? Anybody know? Raise your hand. Oh, all those hands went up. This is in Hangzhou. It's a mountain range called Fei Laifeng, the mountain range that flew in. It flew here, uh, and there's a legend behind that. We know that our teacher's teacher, Master Xu Yun, Master Empty Cloud, was a traveler. He, on foot, covered most of China, including Tibet, including, where else? Um, uh, Penang, Malaysia. So far north, far south, he went... Uh, all over China, he went to the major cities, he went to the farthest mountains, and he's also famous as a pilgrim. So we know that he traveled from Putoshan 
all the way to Wu Taishan. That hasn't begun in our history of him, in our, our stories yet, but um, we just, if you were to, you know one of those cartoon maps where they have foot, footsteps uh, traveling across a map to show you where they travel, or an airplane? The, uh, uh, who is it? Indiana Jones movies. He always has an airplane flying across a map. And if we did that with Master Empty Cloud, there would be an airline trace over the entirety of China. Today, he is covering ground in southeastern China, in Zhejiang province, starting in Hangzhou, and going, he's finishing in a place called Tianmushan, Tianmushan. I have never been to Tianmushan, but I, I've got pictures of it to show to everybody today. So let's take a look at our text, and he is, the title of this is Hangzhou Bianli Mingsheng, paying homage to the holy sites in Hangzhou. Our monk is 38 years old. He is 1877. Let's uh, read the Chinese. And this is not sutra text, so we don't have to put our palms together. Here we go. Hangzhou Xihu Fengjing, Shijie Zhiming, Guoqu Qi Fo Yu Ci Yan Hua, Li Dai Zu Shi Yu Ci Hong Zong, Gu You Fo Di Zhi Cheng, Fo Di Zi Bi Wang Chan Fang, Chao Li Zhu Ming Sheng, Qin Bao. Zhang He Shang, Nai San Tian Zhu Zhi Kai Shan Zhu, Tang Wu Ke, Song Yong Ming, Ming Lian Shi, Jun You Gu Ji. The scenery at Xihu, Westlake, and Hangzhou is famous throughout the world. It was here that the seven Buddhas of antiquity taught and lectured, and the generational ancestors propagated their schools, hence its name, the Buddha Land of the Southeast. Hangzhou's sacred places were an essential stop for Buddhist disciples on pilgrimages. The Venerable Master Bao Zhang, Zhu, um, uh, Bao Zhang of the Jin Dynasty, who was the founding patriarch of the three Tianzhu monasteries, Master Wu Ke, Crow's Nest of the Tang, Master Yongming, Eternal Light of the Sung, and Master Lian Shi, Lotus Pond of the Ming, all visited here in the past. Okay, here's the artist's image. <coughs> so I'm a brand new student of Chinese um, in Toledo, Ohio, high school. And our teacher is telling us about famous places in China, kind of wanting to liven up the lecture, make it more interesting. And he says, Shang Yo Tian Tang, Xia Yo Su Hang. And I remember that was one of the very first um, couplets I guess I ever heard. And it goes, above there's heaven, but below there is Suzhou and Hangzhou. And that stuck in my ear because I thought, whoa, that this uh, phrase, this idiom, this saying is comparing Suzhou and Hangzhou to heaven. So it's like, okay, that must mean Suzhou and Hangzhou are pretty famous, pretty special. So I kind of, as my, one of my earliest impressions of China was someday I want to go see Suzhou and Hangzhou. And uh, I never thought I would get the chance until um, we had connections with Lian, uh, Lin Yin Si and Master Guangquan, the abbot of Lin Yin Si. And so I have one more episode that stuck in my, my ear, which I want to tell you about before I show you the pictures that I've got a lot of photos uh, of our trip to Hangzhou. And this one, this impression came from a sutra. I uh, was, of course, people know that I'm connected to the Avatamsaka Sutra. I pay a lot of attention to that. And I had to pick a topic for my PhD dissertation, so my doctoral project. And I decided on the 
Huayan Chan, the Avatamsaka repentance liturgy, because it has to do with bowing. Lots of, you bai chan, you bow to the repentance. And the uh, commentary to the Avatamsaka Sutra that is famous throughout the world is called the Huayan Suchao, the commentary and sub-commentary by Master Chengguan, Qingliang Guoshi. So in his commentary, he's got a one entire volume that is collected works. First of all, the first nine volumes are his commentary and sub-commentary. Then there's one entire volume of this 10 volume work that is dedicated to kind of addenda. You call it glossaries and bibliographies, etc. So in this 10th volume, he's got uh, one entire section devoted to the Huayan Chan, the Avatamsaka Repentance Liturgy. And so uh, I was really interested in that. What was that? Sure enough, there were three different versions of the Huayan Chan, this repentance ceremony. And so I opened it up, and here's this is Pu Xian Hang Yan Chan. It says, and then it says Gu Hang San Zhang Qing Yan Sha Man Quan. It says. The Tripitaka master Jingyuan of the Song Dynasty from ancient Hangzhou, Gu Hang. And I thought, ancient Hangzhou? So the monk who I'm studying was from Hangzhou also, like in the past? What about that? And it really stuck in my mind, oh, someday, someday I want to go to Gu Hang to ancient Hangzhou and see where this monk who I'm going to write about actually lived and taught. Okay, so fast forward, fast forward. I get an invitation from Master Guangquan, the abbot of Lingyan Si at Hangzhou. That's the, the ancient fourth century, founded in 342, 346 uh, Lingyan Monastery. He says, please come and uh, help our young monks learn how to speak Dharma, especially for Westerners. Sure, I will ha happily do that. So we go to Hangzhou to Lingyin and this is 20, 2016. And uh, I mentioned to Master Guangchen, I said, you know, I first heard Shang Yo Tian Tang Sha Yo Su Hang, he ha ha ha, yeah, everybody knows that, he says. I said, but then, when I looked at the Avatamsaka repentance and I saw the, the Kalafan, who it's dedicated to, said it was Gu Hang, uh, Dega Song Dynasty monk, uh, Qing Yuan. He said, yeah, Qing Yuan. He says, you want to go see where he taught? I'm like, you kidding me? He says, yeah. I says, I'll get the car, I'll take you over there. And, and it's like, for sure? He said, yeah, it's just around the corner. So I was like, yeah, okay. So we jump in the car and we go out to this temple, which is called uh, Gao Li Si, Korea Temple, Gao Li Si. And what is Gao Li Si? It's a long story. And our, today we're talking about Master Empty Cloud, but I wanted to share my connection with Hangzhou as well. So he says, okay, take a look here. This is actually not the precise place where Master Jingyuan taught. This is because why? A freeway went in, <laughs> they moved it. But they rebuilt it, and here's where his bay is. This is, and everything was rebuilt to honor him and his teaching. So I got to bow to the bay, the, the stone uh, inscribed stone stele of Master Jingyuan there in Gu Hang, in ancient Hangzhou. So like Master Empty Cloud, oh man, I too have done my pilgrimage. The scenery at Shihu is in Hangzhou is famous throughout the world. One of my, uh, one of my advisors to my dissertation is uh, a Lutheran minister, mind you. Uh, he's uh, Edmund Yi. Yu Zhuo Hao, Lao Shi, Yu Zhao Shou. He's uh, 
uh, an old friend from my early student days who became my advisor later. He ordained as a, Meth as a Lutheran minister. I ordained as a Buddhist monk. We met again uh, in my PhD program. He said, Hung Shir, it's time for me to retire. I said, oh, well, where are you going, uh, Yu Jiao Shou? He said, uh, I'm going to retire to Hangzhou. He said, that's, that's the place in China where I would like to retire. Why? One reason is that the, uh, the Kunshu is celebrated there. Uh, Professor Yu was an expert in Kun Apra. And he said, that's where it's the best. So I'm going to retire Hangzhou. Plus the scenery is pretty nice. Said, okay, so, whoa. All of these uh, inputs in Hangzhou. So the scenery at Xihu, Westlake, is famous throughout the world. Shangyou Tiantang, Shayou Suhang. Here, the seven Buddhas of antiquity taught and lectured, and the ancestors propagated the school. That's why it's called Dongnan Fo Guo, the Buddha land of the southeast. Now, slow down here. It says seven Buddhas of antiquity have taught here. That's correct. There is a saying in the Buddhist world that Buddhas come back to Hangzhou because this is a really good place to teach the Dharma. That is to say, in this southeastern corner of Zhejiang province, which is not, not far from the coast, um, the affinities for Buddhism to grow there are the best. Hangzhou, not only at one point was the capital of China, but it's long been considered the Dongnan Foguo, the Buddha land of the southeast. Now, what you're looking at right there on the screen is this mountain range called Fei Lai Feng. This is a five minute walk from Ling Yin Si. You come out the gates of Ling Yin Si, cross the road, and here is this mountain range that artists and sculptors for the last thousand years have been carving Buddhas into the stone. It's perfect stone for carving. And these, each one of these symbols, you're looking, the uh, images you're looking at, has a history that goes back 600 years, 800 years, 900 years, 1,000 years. And the carving has been really well preserved. But as you can see, you can go right up to it. It's just right there in front of you. It's just incredible. Now, let me give you an image of Xihu so you can see for yourself how pretty West Lake is. Here we are. Xihu. There is Xihu, West Lake. Uh, you can get paddle boats and paddle with your feet. Or you can, if, you're, if you have a little more money, you can pay somebody to paddle for you. So you can sit in the back and drink tea and sing songs and write poetry. You're supposed to write poetry at Xihu. So it's quite marvelous, quite wonderful. And obviously families do come out to do that, right? It's a great place to uh, bring your family um, Xihu. So um, what about these seven Buddhas of antiquity? Now, there is another, we, what do we do? We do the Qi Rulai, Namo Do Bao Rulai, Namo Bao Sheng Rulai, different set of seven, not those seven Buddhas. There is another set of seven Buddhas taught about particularly in the uh, Chang Ehan Jing. Um, these are Buddhas who come from a previous eon the Alamkara eon, all the way into our current eon, the Bhadra Kalpa, uh, including who? Shakyamuni as number seven. Vipashin Buddha, Vipo Shi Fu, Shikin Buddha, Shi Chi Fu, Vishvavu Buddha, Bisha Fu Fu, Krakuchanda Buddha, Julio Sun Fu, Kanakamuni Buddha, Junohan Muni Fu, Kashipa Buddha, Jasha Fu, and finally, Shakyamuni Buddha, who will be followed by Mi Lefo, Maitreya. Okay, uh, 
listening there in your car or at lunch or wherever you are with your, with your cell phone or your computer, I would like you all to repeat after me, to tie up some affinities with these Buddhas. Are we ready? Everybody say, Be Poshir for, Be Poshir for, Vipashin Buddha. There you go. Let's do, let's put a Buddha in there. Okay, number two, Shi Chi for, Shikin Buddha. Let's add a Namo. Put a Namo in front of that if you're ready. Okay, ready? We can even put our palms together if you like. Let's start over. Namo bi po shi fo. Namo shi chi fo. Okay. Namo bi shi fu fo. Vishvabu Buddha. Vishvabu Buddha. Okay. Namo chi liu sun fo. Okay, Krakuchanda Buddha. Namo Junohan Moni for Kanakamuni Buddha. Namo Jasha for Kashyapa Buddha. Namo Shuja Moni for Shakyamuni Buddha. There we go. Yeah. And then the next one to come is who? Maitreya. So as this, this is a very interesting aspect of Buddha studies, which is they, there is a teaching that usually in one eon, there will be a thousand Buddhas before the eon is finished. In this case, Vipashin, Shikin, Vishvabhu are the last three Buddhas of the Alamkara eon. The next three, uh, I'm sorry, next four, Krakuchanda, Kanakamuni, Kashyapa, and Shakyamuni are Buddhas one, two, three, and four of the Bhadra, the wholesome eon, which is our new eon. And my tray will be number five. So how about that, right? So it's like, hey, no, I learned that. That's a random fact that Eons have a thousand Buddhas. Vipashin Buddha, Shikin Buddha, Vishrava Buddha were the last three in the previous eon. Our new eon, the Bhadra Kalpa, the Bhadra eon, begins with Krakochanda Buddha, Kanakamuni Buddha, Kashyapa Buddha, and Shakyamuni Buddha. <coughs> in Pali, it's Vipassi, Siki, Vesabu, Kakusanda, Konagamana, Kasapa, and Gautama. Those are the, the uh, Pali names of these Buddhas. So, okay. Now, the story goes, how interesting is this? They say that these seven Buddhas return to Hangzhou and teach here. And the eon moves on, the, the, the planet comes and goes, and they return. So, if you're a Buddhist and you want to make a pilgrimage, you come to Hangzhou. Now, our, our friend, Master Guangchen, is a scholar of Buddhism in Hangzhou. He is, uh, has encyclopedic knowledge of all of the stories. And so, Hangzhou is both the, the political capital of China, but it's also the spiritual capital, the Buddhist capital of China. Um, actually, um, the University of Arizona right now in the U.S. is putting together a Hangzhou Buddhist encyclopedia. Um, it's quite a project. With uh, It's a global project. They have scholars from all over the world contributing articles to, uh, to create this uh, encyclopedia of Buddhology focused on Hangzhou. Fascinating project. Master Baozhang, Baozhang of the Jin founded the three Tianzhu monasteries. There are San Tianzhu. There's a Shang, Zhong, and a Xia Tianzhu. Tianzhu is, means India. That's a Chinese way of referring to India from the past. There are three magnificent ancient monasteries that have been rebuilt uh, after the Cultural Revolution. A Tang Dynasty monk, a Ming Dynasty monk, a Song Dynasty monk, and a Ming Dynasty monk, all 
uh, are led their their names to Hangzhou. We know about Master Lotus Pond. Uh, he's incredibly famous monk connected to the, the Lotus Sutra. And uh, Master Yongming Yan Shou put together Chan and Pure Land. He's famous for uh, dual practice. So this is one of China's most uh, lauded, storied, wonderful places. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, Shifu's verse, Hangzhou Fu Hua Da Xing Kai, Xi Hu Mei Jing Duo Tian Cai, Gu Jin Zhi Shi Can Wu Jin, Yi Feng Yi Su Cheng Shan Zai. Beautiful poem. The Buddhists teach at Hangzhou, explain their best practices. Westlake's beautiful scenery surely rivals the sights in the heavens. Wise advisors, past and present, one can't visit them all. Good indeed, those paragons and role models who improve society standards. Nice. So this today's story is about pilgrimage. Our monk is uh, now, he's 38. He's held the precepts for almost two decades. He's uh, traveling around China, Sanfang, looking for opportunities to increase his knowledge of Buddha Dharma. And we know in the past, he was just this um, ascetic monk out in the, in the wilderness who wanted nothing more than to Tong Yun Jia Wu. He wanted to uh, ride the clouds and drive the fog. And, and uh, luckily he met a wise advisor who said, "Not nah, actually that would be good, but don't you want to teach? Don't you want to help others? So come down and learn some Buddha Dharma. So he did, and uh, now he's out on the road, Sanfang. And his travels take him to Tian Mu Shan. Are we ready? Here we go. Shi Tian Mu Wei Zhe Sheng Ming Shan, Fo Fa Zui Xing, Zong Jiang Die Chu, Ru Yuan Chao Gao Feng Yuan, Miao Chan Shi Wei Kai Shan. Zhong Feng Guo Shi Zhi 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 OK Qing Yulin Guo Shi Fa Yang Guang Da Pi Zhen Zhong Feng Ci Chu Yu Dao Gua Lian Hua Nai Gao Feng Miao Chan Shi Dui Zhi Shui Mo Die Er Bei Hu Zhi Sheng Jing Xi Tian Mu is a famous mountain in Zhejiang province. The Buddha Dharma flourished Many great masters came from here, such as Yuan Dynasty Dharma Master Yan Miao of Gaofeng, who first settled on the mountain, National Master Zhongfeng, who succeeded him. It was here that National Master Yu Lin of the Qing Dynasty extensively propagated the reputation of his school. Here, too, is the renowned cliff, Inverted Lotus, where Chan Master Yan Miao of Gaofeng overcame a sleep demon. He fell from the peak, but was rescued. Okay, there is the image under a pagoda. Look at that beautiful. This looks exactly like the three pagodas here at Gold Coast Armor Realm, doesn't it? Who is that? Is that Sam meditating under there? Entering Samadhi? Don't fall asleep, Sam. You might fall off of inverted lotus. Yeah, trouble. Yeah. Okay. Xi Ri Gao Feng Zhi Chong Tian, Shi Si Bu Bei Shui Mo Chan, Do So Jing Shen Xi Da Ding, Wei Tuo Hu Fa Chao Wan Qian. In the past, Master Gao Feng was soaring aspirations, made a vow to overcome the demon of sleep. Rousing his vital energies, he practiced a big samadhi. Dharma protector Wei Tuo's rescue overcame 10,000 eons. Of bad habits. Okay, Tian Mu Shan. Uh, it's a real place. Take a look. Are we ready? Tian Mu Shan. There, right there. Okay. Mount Tian Mu. Uh, it's in Lin'an County, 
It's uh, 57 miles west of Hangzhou, 82 kilometers west of Hangzhou, where we just were, in Zhejiang in southern eastern China. There are two peaks, west Tianmu, Xi Tianmu, and east. There are twin ponds near the top of the peaks that led to the naming of the mountain. Um, the reason why I took you to Wikipedia here is because the second paragraph, there are giant Japanese cedars, waterfalls, Tianmu Ti, peaks surrounded by clouds, bamboo shoots, temples, nunneries, odd-shaped rocks. We just heard about one of them. Twenty, uh, more than 2,000 species of plants grow on the mountain, including West Tianmu, the last surviving truly wild population of ginkgo trees. Uh, there is a Japanese cedar called the Giant Tree King, named by the Qianlong Emperor, the Qing. Uh, it was 86 feet, 26 meters tall, uh, 7 feet in diameter. There are also hundreds of species of birds and animals, including 39 endangered or protected species, including a clouded leopard and the black muntjac, which is a uh, uh, deer. Okay, um, Tianmu is really, really famous in Chinese culture outside of Buddhism for things like pottery. The uh, people who know uh, pottery and kilns know that this is really famous uh, glaze that was developed at Tianmushan by putting iron in the glaze. Um, so in Japanese, this is called Tenmoku, right? And uh, this is from Tianmu. Tianmoku, Tenmoku is Tianmu in Japanese. And it, it's a special method of firing that has these unexpected results. Uh, and people love it because of its uh, special, rare, one-of-a-kind qualities. Uh, so that's Tianmu, Tenmoku pottery. Uh, let's see here. This is a contemporary chawan with Tianmoku glaze. And uh, there's another one. This is a contemporary sake cup. In, this is, the Japanese learned it in Tianmushan, took it back to Japan, and of course made it unique and famous and wonderful. So I've got some images from Tianmushan to give people a sense. Um, quite spectacular. What did Master Empty Cloud do? He spent the winter here. Shui Lao Hesang spent the winter in Tianmushan. This is one of the ponds that gives the name. The eyes, Tianmu is eyes of heaven. And there are two of these ponds that uh, are just spectacular. And of course, pilgrims have been coming here for so long that they cut steps in it and made it accessible. Here are some of the cedar trees we heard about. Incredible, uh, massive cedar trees that have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this is a great one. Here they are. Yeah, here are the pilgrims walking up the cedar trees. So uh, Tian Mushan is justly famous for its uh, spiritual qualities and the fact that there are thousands, uh, there are, what did it say? How many uh, endangered species here who are still uniquely clinging to life? Uh, only here, right? So this is one of the incredible cedar trees. Yeah, that's a marvelous tree. Has inspired uh, Chinese and Japanese pilgrims and tourists forever. So the story that is the Shifu is referring to here there is one Gao Feng Miao Chan Shi. His name was Yuan Miao Chan Shi. His story 
I, I can't tell, do it justice the way Shurfu does. Shurfu tells this story so well. Uh, but there was a Chan master who had the bad habit of falling asleep when he meditated. Gao uh, Feng Miao. And he uh, tried everything. You know, coffee didn't work. Tea didn't work. P you know, close, close pins to hold his eyes open, you know, propping his eyes, it didn't work. He would always just nod and fall asleep. So um, he decided that he was going to, uh, there we go, he was going to um, make a vow. The only thing that was going to allow him to meditate successfully was his own willpower. So what did he do? He went to Tian Mushan and he went up to Inverted Lotus Peak. There's a, you can see it in the, pic, the, the drawing here. It's wider at the top than it is at the bottom, like an inverted lotus flower. And he said, I'm going to meditate here if I fall asleep, I'm going to fall off and forget it. That's it. Uh, I'm going to use the fear, the, the power of life and death to keep me awake when I meditate. So that was the vow that he made. And it's like, whoa, you know, this is it. If I fall asleep, I'm going to become part of inverted lotus peak. I'll just be a wet spot on the, on the rock. So sure enough, meditating, starts to close his eyes, feels the heat rise inside. Ooh, down into empty space he goes and he thought this is it, you know, okay. So that was it, at least I died for a good purpose, you know. And sure enough, he's suspended in midair. It's as if a hand came out to grab him. And he said, what, what, what? Did, did someone save me? Who saved me? A voice comes out of space. It is I, Weto Bodhisattva, who saved you. Well, but, but, but why did you save me? Because your vow crossed over all of the eons of bad habits and afflictions that made you fall asleep. There's more merit and virtue in your vow than there was negative energy in your karmic obstacles. So I saved you. Oh, so Master Yemiao of Kaofeng said, oh my goodness, wait till Bodhisattva save me. Wow, my karma must be really good. Now, I guess how many people like me are there in all of China? And as soon as he has that thought, once more into space, flipping down, and he says, oh no, yeah, I realize, he says, I shouldn't have said that. That was really arrogant. I repent. At least if I, now when I hit the rocks below, at least my conscience is clear. That was too arrogant. I repent. I really shouldn't have said that. <clears throat> Caught in midair. And he says, but, but, but wait. Who caught me? It is I, Waito Bodhisattva. He said, but he said, and then when Shrifu tells the story, he, he, he really gave, oh, way, need someone. You, he said, how come you flip flop? How come you're wishy washy? Why didn't you let me fall? And uh, Waito Bodhisattva says, well, he said, I'll tell you, as soon as you had that arrogant thought, my answer to your question is, there are as many cultivators like you as there are hairs on an ox, meaning pretty common to be arrogant and proud of, your, proud of your accomplishments. But your sincere thought of repentance wiped away all of the negativity of that arrogance. That's why I came back to save your Dharma. So I am your hufa, wohuchanidafa, because your, your repentance was sincere. So that's the story of Gaofeng Miao, the Gaofeng uh, is Tall Peak. So the cultivator on the Tall Peak, Master Yuan Miao. So he overcame a sleep demon and was rescued by Waito Bodhisattva. So our, our lesson, what we can take from that is don't count your chickens. Don't figure, you know, I'm going to climb up to the top of our 
stupa and meditate up there and wait till Bodhisattva will protect me. Uh, that's not, you have to be really sincere before wait till Pusa comes to Hucher Nidafa, protect your Dharma. But he has, he will do so. Master Gao Feng is, a, is an actual historical person. This actually happened. So that's the, uh, the fame of Hangzhou. We want to take a look at some uh, other photographs here from Hangzhou. This is my Dharma talk to the uh, Buddha Studies Academy in Hangzhou. I was rare opportunity to uh, address all of these young monks, Nianqing uh, Wei, and my talk was challenges in the 20, 20th century, uh, this is 2016, challenges in the 21st century to cultivating monks and nuns. And uh, so we have some affinities, here it is. Challenges and opportunities uh, for monks and nuns in the 21st century. So after that, uh, I was invited back to speak Dharma for uh, monks in China who wanted to speak Dharma for modern people. So that, that was uh, an opportunity to go back to Ling Yan Si and... Uh, essentially talk about things like how do we, how do we uh, incorporate technology in our Dharma talks? Um, is there an advantage to listeners to when you hear, uh, what, what do you lose when you lecture on Zoom versus lecturing to people's actual ears in the same room? Is technology a plus? Or is it a, a minus? Or can you use it as a tool? Questions like that. Questions of translation. Questions of tradition. Uh, here is uh, an example. This is a new, an ancient tradition revived. This is 2013. Ling Yin revived the Cha Hui, the tea ceremony, which was... Uh, not so famous necessarily at Ling Yin Si, but more at Jing Shan Si, not, which is a, just a, uh, an hour's drive, also in Hangzhou, uh, in the Hangzhou area, under the um, jurisdiction, you could say, of the Zhejiang Buddhist Association. What they did is they invited uh, Yu Yan and people who had affinities to come to the monastery and drink tea and listen to the monks singing sutras, mantras, and Buddhist songs. And it was such a success, as you can see here, the monks uh, singing with their palms together, singing beautiful uh, fan bei, while monks came down to pao cha for people uh, who were attending. So quite a wonderful thing, it spread over China and became uh, popular all over China as something that, uh, uh, a new activity based on traditional practice. So what happens is uh, people associate, uh, monks are someone who can serve and also have this incredible flavor of tea and listen to beautiful Buddhist music. Quite marvelous. And uh, at, at first, uh, I remember Dharmaster Lai uh, and I, and with our delegation from uh, Taiwan, from uh, Wampo Chang, from all over Vietnam, we, uh, Hung Lai at first was like, boy, I don't know, uh, do I have to pour tea for my lay people now? And yet, when the monks were serving him, he said, actually, it was kind of nice listening to the, the chanting and tasting the tea. Now, what kind of tea, one of the, the aspects of Hangzhou culture is longjing, 
Longjing tea, dragon well tea, which you're seeing right here in the fields. Dragon well tea is, Longjing tea is grown here in this part of Zhejiang in Hangzhou. And oh my, it has very special, wonderful ambiance um, that it doesn't, you can't find it other places. So one of the aspects of Hangzhou is that it's a place that blended uh, Chinese culture, Buddhist culture, and politics and history. So uh, many, many famous stories in Chinese culture originated in Hangzhou. Here is one of them, Qi Gong Hofu, right? Living Buddha Qi Gong who is kind of like a Daniel Boone character, kind of like a Ned Kelly in Australia, only he's not a criminal. Uh, but he's, he's this guy who broke all the rules. He uh, would drink and he would eat entire chickens and then spit them out whole, you know, uh, and cross them over by eating them and doing all these incredibly wrong things in Buddhism. But when you look at his actual motive, he was compassionate. He was doing it out of compassion. So Qigong based himself in Hangzhou. He traveled around, he saved people from fires, he saved people from drowning, and he's totally outrageous. You know, he's like a, a, not a precept holder, so he's not actually a Buddhist, but he's a Chinese cultural hero who uh, uh, lived and worked in, at Ling Yin Si in Hangzhou. This is the uh, main Buddha in the Buddha Hall, Da Shong Bao Dian, in, da Dian, in uh, at Ling Yin Si. So, so much of, uh, here's, there's an entire hall for Ji Gong. He has this weird hat based on his, he goes barefoot, he's got a broken, broken uh, palm leaf for a fan. And uh, we should, there, there's lots of wonderful stories about Master Ji Gong. So that's, uh, here he is saving people from, from, uh, from fires. There's an entire hall at Ling Yin Si with Ji Gong's finger painting, painting on the wall of uh, these stories. So. People recognize him by his hat and his fan. Qi Gong Ho Fu. One more picture before we end. This is uh, before. My first visit to Ling Yin Si was years earlier. And at the time, my memory of it was there were so many people, so many tourists coming to Ling Yin Si to bow to the Buddha that you couldn't walk straight. You had to turn sideways to go through the crowd. There were so many people. Um, and my other memory of it was there was so much incense smoke in the air that I was afraid for my lungs. Uh, people would take 60 sticks of incense and offer them, shake them at the Buddha, and put them willy-nilly in front of all the altars. Well, Ling Yin Si, was one of the first monasteries in China to go to the government and say, couldn't we put an official limit on the amount of incense that people can buy and burn? The government agreed, and when you go into Ling Yin Si, and you, you have to buy a, a door fee, but it's a minimal amount, you buy a, this is the Mai Man, Nega Man Piao, Nega Man. When you, you register, you pay your fee, they click you in and they hand you three sticks of incense, only three. Three sticks of incense, you can burn them anywhere, anywhere you like, but three only. This way, they cleaned up all kinds of pollution in Hangzhou. And of course, they made the incense sellers very unhappy. Uh, they said, how can you, uh, you know, you're destroying our commerce. They said, well, sell flowers instead. So they switch to flowers. But uh, this, this scene is no longer, you, you don't see this anymore with this, the smoke 
so thick that you could cut through it. So anyway, um, we arrived uh, just this year at Lingyan Su for the forum, the three country forum, China, uh, Canada, and the US. And it was November, uh, so two months ago. And uh, Master Guangxuan said, uh, uh, he said, I, I don't want to scare you. He said, but we keep accurate figures of how many people come in uh, to, to bow to the Buddhas and to worship here. He said, this is now November. We have one more month to go in the year 2023. He said, how many tourists have come to pay respects this year? 10 million. 10 million people have come through the turnstile at uh, Lingyan Si in one year, in November, with one more month to go. He said, so uh, Buddhism is, you could say Buddhism in Hangzhou is still doing quite well. Dongnan Foguo, the Buddha land of the southeast. So likewise, Master Empty Cloud, Shi and Lao Hushan, uh, toured around in Zhejiang province. Uh, and there's, uh, next week we have more of his touring to go before we get to the, the, uh, the next exciting episode. This is all his time as a pilgrim before his pilgrimage began, his three steps one bow pilgrim. Okay, there we are. Uh, that's today's episode, stories that we tell. What a great life to be able to tell stories and show pictures of, of uh, Buddhist pilgrimage sites in China. Okay, we're going to ask everybody to make a wish to... mind like a lighthouse to send out goodness in all directions. Here we go. May every living be our minds as one and radiant with light. Share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see our hands and hearts can find in getting unity may our minds away to great compassion wisdom and to joy may kindness find reward may all who sorrow of our endless night because our hearts are one this world of pain turns into paradise may all become compassionate and wise may all become compassionate and wise may all become compassionate we're going to bow to the Buddhas. You can do it right from where you're sitting if you like. I'll ring the bell and you can join me. Here we go. Third bow. Bow oh, in respect to the Venerable Master. Alrighty, that's going to do it for us for today. See you all next week. Amitofo. Bye, everybody.